Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to derive the equations of motion for a spring mass dampener system if there's an external force acting on it. So let's consider a spring and a dampener connected to a mass. And let's say that this spring mass dampener system has an external force, F of T, acting on it as well. Well, to determine the equations of motion, let's consider what this spring mass dampener system looks like when this block has moved a horizontal distance x in some time t. Well, let's consider what it looks like. We're going to have our block just over here, and we're going to have a few forces acting on it. We're going to have our spring force, kx. Notice it's to the left because the spring resists displacement. And we're also going to have another force, cx dot, because our dampener resists velocity. Not only that, but we also have our force, which is a function of time here, f of t. We can turn this free body diagram into a mathematical expression by using Newton's laws. We know that the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to your mass of your object times by your acceleration in your x direction. Now we know that kx is going to be negative because it's acting towards the left, so we're going to write this as minus kx minus cx dot, for the same reason this is minus, plus f of t, and that's going to be equal to your mass times by your acceleration, or if you like, your double derivative of your displacement. Let's put these negatives over to the right-hand side to make them positive, and what we'll realize is we'll get our mass times by our double derivative, plus cx dot, plus kx, must be equal to our force, which is a function of time acting on our block. Now, if it's true if it's true that f of t, which is our force acting on our block, is equal to f0 sine omega t, then it turns out we can actually find out the particular solution of this quite simply. And this is going to be the purpose of this video. So let's actually replace this with f0 sine omega t here. This is only true if our force is actually sinusoidally varying. So for some time we'll be acting to the right, and then for some time we'll be acting to the left, etc., etc. Well, the way we do this is by guessing a particular solution. But before I get started on that, let me actually quickly clarify the differences between the different types of omegas you've probably seen in previous videos. Omega n is something we refer to as your natural frequency in terms of radians per second. And this is your natural frequency. So it determines your frequency of your block if there was no dampening. In other words, if this dampener was gone or if c was equal to zero. Now omega d is something we call our damped natural frequency. And that's also in terms of radians per second. And the omega we're dealing with now, which is just omega without a subscript, that's your force frequency. So notice the difference between these three omegas. These two refer to your frequency of your block, whereas this refers to your frequency of your force. Now we'll be determining what happens when omega equals your natural frequency um, in later videos, but for now, let's just go along with this. So let's see if we can find what we call a particular solution to this differential equation. And to do that, let's guess whether something's a solution. So let's check Actually, let me write this in blue. Let's check whether x equals x sine omega t minus phi is in fact a solution, where this capital X is a constant and this phi is just a constant. So let's find out whether this is a solution. And we find out whether it's a solution by plugging this into here. And to do that, we need to find its respective derivatives. So we're going to make this we know that x dot is going to be equal to omega capital X cosine omega t minus phi. And x double dot, once you differentiate this again, is going to be minus omega squared x sine omega t minus phi. That's just using your trigonometry um, differentiation rules just there. Now let's plug this into this expression just to the right. Well, we know we're going to be left with m once we plug in this term, m times by this term, which is going to be minus omega squared x sine omega t minus phi, plus c times by this term, which is just omega x cosine 
omega t minus phi. And let's add this final term, which is just x. So it'll be plus k times by x sine omega t minus phi. And that's going to be equal to, and that's going to be equal to f0 sine omega t. I hope I've got enough room there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group the signs together and see what I get. So let's do that. Let's group the signs together. If you group the sine omega t minus phi's together, then you're going to have this term and this term added together. So we're going to I'm going to add this one first. It'll be kx minus m omega squared x, right? And let's group the cosines together. And what we're going to get is plus cosine omega t minus phi times by this term, which is just omega x times by c. And that's going to be equal to your right hand side, which is just f0 times by sine omega t. Now we can write sine omega t as sine of omega t minus phi plus phi. It seems like it's pretty much an unnecessary step or even a detrimental step because, you know, we could just eliminate these quite nicely. But we're going to have to do this so that we can use the sine rule to expand this out now. Recall, recall the sine rule. Recall that sine of a plus b is going to be equal to sine of a cos b plus sine of b cos a. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this out, realizing that this is just a, and this right here is just b. So let's do this. Let's simplify the right-hand side. Let's simplify the right-hand side first. Well, we know this will be equal to f0 times by sine times by omega t minus phi cosine of phi plus f0 sine of phi cosine of omega t minus phi. And in fact, we notice we can equate coefficients here. We notice we can equ equate the coefficients of sine omega t minus phi with the coefficient of sine omega t minus phi just here. Let me draw a line down here to this. Okay, we also know we can uh, find out the coefficient of cos omega t minus phi here and the coefficient of cos omega t here and equate their coefficients. So to really hammer this point down, let me zoom out, scroll down, and make some space for this. We know if we equate equate coefficients of sine omega t minus phi, what we're going to be left with is this coefficient right here. It's going to be kx minus m omega squared x must be equal to the coefficient of this term, which is just f0 times by cosine of phi. That's going to be one really crucial equation. In fact, I'll call it equation one. We also know we could equate coefficients here. So let's equate coefficients of cosine omega t minus phi from both the left hand side and the right hand side. Notice on the left hand side we'll be dealing with this, just this term which will be um, c w times by x and on the right hand side we'll have to equate this coefficient which will just be f0 times by sine phi. And I'll call that equation 2. Now let's divide equation 2 by equation 1 using simultaneous equations and see if we can solve this any further. Once you divide equation 2 by equation 1, then on the left hand side we'll be given c omega x and on the right hand side, sorry, and on the denominator will be kx minus m omega squared x. And on the right hand side we'll be left with f0 sine phi divided by f0 cosine phi. We can already notice some mass cancellation now. We notice the f zeros cancel off because they're not equal to zero. And for the same reasons, the x's cancel off as well. So we can write this now as a pretty interesting result. We can say that sine phi divided by cosine phi is simply tan phi, tan phi. And on, the, and on this side, we'll be left with c omega divided by k minus m omega squared. Or if you like, you could write this as phi is going to be equal to inverse tan, inverse tan of c omega, let me write that in green, c omega divided by 
k minus m omega squared. I'll be talking more in detail of how to simplify this expression out further, but for now let's consider this expression just here. We notice that this expression is just like saying if you have an imaginary triangle just here, with an angle of phi just here, then its opposite would be c omega, and its adjacent would be k minus m omega squared. This triangle has no practical application whatsoever. It's purely based off this expression. Don't try and search for an application of this triangle. It's purely due to this equation just here. Which means then that the hypotenuse of this triangle would have to be equal to the square root of both of these terms squared added to each other. So let me write this down. It will be c omega squared plus k minus m omega squared all squared. And the beautiful thing about doing this is we can now find sine phi to plug this into here. So let me write this down below. We know that sine phi, sine phi must in fact be equal to opposite over hypotenuse, which is just going to be c omega divided by this beast. Now we can solve for our capital X now by writing X is going to be equal to F0 divided by C omega times by sine phi. And when you plug the sine phi into here, you'll notice the C omega is cancelled. So I'm going to do this in one step. You can write that capital X, our amplitude of our particular solution, can be written as F0 times by 1 divided by the square root just here. So, so far we have two particular really important formulas. We've got this one outlining what phi is, and we've got this one outlining what x is, in terms of k, c, and m. But in engineering textbooks, usually it's simplified further by substituting out the c's, k's, and m's in terms of our dampening ratio and our natural frequency. So I'm going to be doing the same for you just now. So to do this, let's first recall from a previous video the following definitions. We've shown that c divided by m, this ratio, or I should say we've defined c on m, to be equal to 2 times by zeta, your dampening ratio, times by omega n. And we've also shown, I'll call this equation 1, and I'll call the second equation which we defined, k divided by m, this ratio was omega n squared. I'll call that equation 2. Now to simplify this out, I need to find an expression for c omega and k minus m omega squared. So let's do that. We know that c omega can just be written as 2 zeta omega n times by m, once you times the mass over, times by your frequency of your force. We can now substitute the mass out, writing this as 2 zeta omega n times by omega times by, once we substitute the mass out for, let's see, it'll be k divided by omega n squared, k divided by omega n squared, then what do we get? We'll notice that 1 omega n will cancel out with 1 omega n here. So let me write this down. This omega n will cancel off with this squared, showing us that our result is k times by 2 zeta omega divided by omega n. That's going to be equal to c omega. Now let's solve for this blue term, k minus m omega squared. Well, let's leave the k where it is, and let's substitute the mass out. We know when you substitute the mass out, we'll be left with um, k divided by omega n squared times by omega squared. And once you, once you factorize the k out, you're going to be left with 1 minus omega divided by omega n all squared. And the beauty of doing this is so that we can substitute both of these values back into each of these equations to see where we get. If you substitute these expressions into phi, you'll get phi is equal to inverse tan, or if you like arctan, of c omega, which was k times by 2 zeta omega on omega n, all divided by this blue term, which we shown was just k times by this thing, which is 1 minus omega on omega n squared. Notice the k's cancel off nicely, leaving us with the solution that phi must be equal to inverse tan of 2 zeta omega on omega n divided by 1 minus omega on omega n squared. Okay, now we're ready to start simplifying this expression by substituting these values into here as well. So we know that x 
is going to be equal to F0 times by this fraction, which is just going to be 1 divided by your square root of C omega squared, which will be K times by 2 omega, 2 zeta I should say, omega divided by omega n squared. And this blue term will be k times by 1 minus omega on omega n squared all squared. We can notice now that the k's can be factored outside of each individual square sign and also be factored outside of the square root sign itself, leaving us with the solution that x is going to be equal to f0 divided by k times by this ratio, 1 divided by the square root of 2 zeta omega on omega n squared plus 1 minus omega on omega n squared all squared. Now that we've found the values of phi and x, we've officially found out all the information that defines our particular solution. In the next video, I'll be showing you how we can use this particular solution with our homogeneous solution to find out our total solution.